When did you first meet Michael? He and I came together in, under kind of unique circumstances, but prior to us, he was actually dating my mother. She discovered shortly after they were dating that she had breast cancer, and um, she only had so long to live. And so they got married in, in Vegas, um, and within three to six months after that, she passed away. Their relationship had, to me, a very odd start. It was stepdaughter turned wife and stepdad turned husband. You know, this time of loss for both of us, we sort of bonded. And eventually, it turned into a romantic relationship. Michael Redlick was a sports executive. He worked for many sports teams across the United States, from San Francisco to Memphis, and eventually, they uh, ended up landing in Orlando, Florida with their two children. Michael and Danielle would eventually marry in 2004 and have two children together as Michael pursued his career as an executive with professional sports teams in Tennessee, and California, Indiana. So we learned that Danielle's and Michael's marriage was uh, a rocky one. When a person number one, you need police, fire, and medical. I believe my husband is deceased. The home that she is standing in in this moment in time looks like something from a horror movie. And why do you believe he's deceased? Because he's stiff and he's wounded. He might have had a heart attack. I don't know. Okay. Did you just find him? No, actually. It happened last night. It happened last night? Correct. As Miss Redlick says, in the first words out of her mouth, the first version of events that she provides, I think my husband is deceased. She might have died of a heart attack. That's the first version. So did you find him this morning? Because I know you said that you believed it happened last night. Did you see him last night? Was he OK? He was not OK last night. We had we had altercation, and he stabbed himself. and. I ran into the bathroom, and then when I came out, I tried to help him, and I thought he was just lying in blood. You say he tried to help himself? him, and I, 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 correct, yes. Initially, she tells first responders that she believed he had a heart attack, and very quickly, that began to unravel. He was actually choking me and trying to suffocate me first. I actually went for the knife, and he was screaming, out, what are you going to do, what are you going to do, you do, stab me, and he grabbed it. And that's when he did it. He made a motion, and I ran out of the room. Within a couple of breaths, we hear the second story. Miss Redlick says that there was an altercation that she, she, hear it, she went and grabbed a knife. That Mr. Redlick took the knife from her and stabbed himself. When did you go back to check on him, or did you stay there? No, I stayed in the bathroom for a while, and he he came to the bathroom door screaming stuff about how he was going to send me to jail and all this stuff. And then I was just trying to stay away from him. And then he, I heard some moaning and stuff, and I was scared. I finally went to check on him, mm -hmm. and uh, I could see that he was out of it. And I was right. slipping on his blood, and it was heavily, heavily bloody. So I tried to, I was trying to give him mouth to mouth. It took Danielle 11 hours to call 911 after Michael Redlick was stabbed. Is there a reason why you didn't call last night? And I was really afraid, and I didn't think anybody would believe me. And I was just trying to get him to wake up. Her story will remain the same for three years until her trial in Florida's Ninth Judicial Circuit Court. So you were asked what happened, and you explained we had, we had an altercation, and he stabbed himself. This was a lie, Ms. Redlick. Yes. And you wanted this 911 operator to believe your lie, correct? Uh, yes. Did you believe her to be claiming that Mr. Redlick basically brought about his own death? Yes. In this particular case, it's clear that the cause of death was that Michael Redlick was stabbed. Did the autopsy results as shared to you by the medical examiner give you reason to believe that that was not true? Yes. The manner of death was determined to be a homicide. Danielle needed to get on the stand and take her own defense because at this point, there was nobody else to tell her side of the story. Mr. Alec, on January 11th, 2019, did you stab your husband? I did. Why? Um, he was suffocating me. I couldn't breathe, and he had me pinned down. 
I thought he snapped and I could die. Why did you think that you could die in that circumstance? I couldn't get away. You're trying to get away? I was. Did you have any choice about to use a weapon to get away? No. On January 10th, he finds a text on Danielle's phone. This is from another man where they're making plans or the man is asking her to, to essentially go on a date with him. What's the tone of the text messages between yourself and Michael that morning? Um, he's accusing me of having lunch with my boyfriend and, you know, am I enjoying myself? What am I doing? So what's the tone? Is it... Sarcastic. What happens when you get home? I had been out all day, so I decided to take a shower at that point. My husband comes into the house and into the bathroom. He pulls out his phone and he tells me he's videotaping me. And he says, I'm gonna get one last look at you. I'm gonna send this to your boyfriend. And he starts saying a lot of vulgar comments. What was he saying? I hope he Fs the sh out of you and then beat your face in and then I'm gonna beat both your faces in. How about that? Things like that. What do you do next? He starts following me around the house, harassing me, more of the same type comments. He was threatening to take the house and leave me penniless and take the kids and I better not come to the football game or he's gonna tell everybody what a horror and bitch I am. On the evening of January 11, 2019, after returning home from their son's football game, Michael and Danielle are still arguing about the text from Caesar, the man from the dating site. When you arrive home, what are you doing? I'm sitting at the table. Are you eating? Yes. At any point, does your husband arrive? Yes. What happens when he arrives? Grabs the, my sandwich. He's talking about um, Caesar, and then he spits the food at me. How does it progress from there after you spit the sandwich? So then I just said, OK, I grabbed the, the bag, and I said, you know what? I think I am going to go out with Caesar. And I start walking into the kitchen. And that's when he, he comes up behind me and grabs me. To Danielle, that, that flips the switch. I felt our heads collide. And at that point, I grabbed the center island and I reach up to pull myself up to face him. And um, that's when he takes his right hand. So he grabs me here and slams me down onto the center island counter. What's going through your mind at this point? Well, I'm scared. I'm thinking I'm under attack. And he's acting like he's going to punch me in the face. And instead, he comes down and he grinds his fist into my face and then puts his hands over my, both his hands over my hand and my nose. And he's pressing as hard as he can, smashing my nose into my face. Are you able to breathe? No. But, uh, I tried to take like three or four breaths and I couldn't even get a breath. When you realize that you're not able to breathe, what's in your mind that? That he snapped and that he's probably gonna kill me. Danielle's claim is that she had to do this. She had absolutely no choice. Self-defense was the only way that she was going to make it out of this situation alive. So what do you do when you're trapped in that position, unable to breathe with him over you? So I use my free arm to push open the drawer ahead of me. What are you finding there? A knife. What's Michael doing at this point? He says, what are you going to stab me? And I take the knife and I position it and face it toward him. What does he do at that point? He immediately just goes for my chin and puts me back, and I, and I stab him at that point. At the time you have the knife and you stab him with it, what is your goal here in your mind? To get away from him. If you don't do that, what is your belief that will happen? That he might smother me to death. It was a single stab wound, and it was to the shoulder. If she is attacking him out of rage, if she is trying to end his life or trying to kill him, then you could probably expect to see different injuries. It was consistent with somebody who does what they need to do in order to escape the situation. And where do you go at that point? What do you do? I ran to the master bathroom and locked myself in there and was just hoping and praying he wasn't coming in there, but also thinking to myself, what am I going to do? This is crazy. I got to get out of here. He has snapped, in her opinion. And she thought, at this point, that he can kill her. After she comes out of the bathroom, sees her husband on the ground with the blood and the injury, and she's in shock. She panics. She doesn't know what to do. No, these are not rational decisions, but it's not a rational person at this point. You called 911 again that night? I did not. 
I think it's just sinking in that he's dead and um, I start to just kind of panic and there's blood everywhere and I went and grabbed some towels out of the linen closet in the, in the master bath and I just started wiping up some of the blood. I think I did grab them off at that point and I started to clean up the kitchen area a little bit and I said, what am I doing? And I just stopped. She's not a rational actor at that point. All these emotions going through her head and the trauma that she's just experienced, she doesn't know how to act, so she starts making bad decisions. Charlotte, do you feel that you overreacted when you stabbed Michael? No. I mean, I didn't like the, the end result, of course. I never wanted him to be dead. You feel like what you did was necessary to protect yourself? That moment, yes. In her direct testimony, Danielle explained that she stabbed her husband Michael in self-defense. But she had not mentioned that fact in the 911 call. Inconsistent stories like this are never helpful for the defendant and raise suspicions about Danielle's actual intentions. Would you please hand the verdict forms to the deputy, please? In circuit court of the Ninth Judicial Circuit, State of Florida versus Danielle Justine Redmond. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. So say we all sign juror badge number 283-4-person. We definitely thought about the single stab wound. Michael did die, but there was only one stab wound. So to me, that, that looks like self-defense. Verdict as to count two. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of tampering with physical evidence as charged in the information. So say we all. She's sentenced to time served with one additional year of probation.